Earlier today, Team Biden met with Russian officials for nearly eight hours of talks. This massive troop buildup, nearly 100,000 Russian soldiers, is making things, frankly, a little bit awkward, as you could say, with Ukraine. Imagine standing right next to somebody and just staring at their face for an hour without doing or saying anything. That's essentially what's happening right now between Russia and Ukraine. Today's talks did not make any real progress, although the Russians said they have no plans to invade. One Euro leader saying, I guess they're just there to have coffee. Russia is demanding an ironclad guarantee that Ukraine will never be allowed to join NATO, the decades-old alliance that would bring the West and its military might right to Russia's southern border. They don't like that. Here is the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. It's clear that we've offered him two paths forward. Uh, one is through diplomacy and dialogue. Uh, the other is through uh, deterrence and massive consequences for Russia if it renews its aggression against Ukraine. So joining me now is our senior national security analyst, Rick Grinnell. Good to see you, sir. Do you have any guess what is going to happen with this? Ooh, well, if, if history is our guide, Rob, we know yeah. that uh, we heard the same thing from the Russians about we're, we're not interested in grabbing Crimea, we're not interested in moving into Crimea. They said that right before the Olympics and right after the Olympics, yeah. they did it. So when did the Olympics start here this time? February 3rd, 4th, something like that? So I'm watching it very closely. Uh, look, the troubling comments from our Secretary of State is that you know, he's talking about deterrence, and deterrence is uh, part of his strategy. Well, deterrence should have been done about nine months ago. Instead of giving Russia a pipeline and pretending like we're being tough with them, but handing them a pipeline of influence and gas, yep. uh, we, we should have said to them, no, that, that's a deterrent, is when you have a credible threat of military action and a president who is going to mix it up and, and people are not going to understand, countries are not going to understand exactly where we're going. The problem with Biden of 40 years is everybody knows exactly where he's going yeah. and it's to the weakest position. Right. That's what the last administration taught everybody is that sometimes when you're unpredictable, it really works in your benefit. Um, some of the demands that Putin has uh, of NATO, uh, you can see it here, no expansion, uh, no activity in Ukraine, et cetera. What would Russia do? If, you know, I, I don't know how long the process takes, if NATO accepted somehow magically tonight, Ukraine is now a member of NATO, what does Russia do? Well, look, um, you know, no one wants to s stick it in the Russians' eyes, right? Yeah. We, we, we need good relations with the Russians. We need the Russians to act more like a member of the international community. The problem is, is that we see the behavior and it's terrible. And so we have to be able to um, unite against them. I, I would say that, first of all, that's never going to happen. Uh, we don't have an agreement at NATO to accept new members. There's some members of NATO, uh, the French in particular, and maybe even the Germans, who don't want new members. Um, but, but I do believe that the Russians uh, particularly Putin, is thinking about the old glory days of the Soviet Union. And he wants there to be a sphere of influence yeah. surrounding uh, the current Russia and look at some of the old Soviet states as how do they either get them back or get them into the sphere of influence. And I think what we have to do with our European partners is signal those days are gone. Uh, let's let, let's realize that uh, we're not going to go backwards and let you influence these individual countries that decided to leave your sphere of influence. They're independent. They'll always be independent. But now let's find ways to work together peacefully. Again, I don't want to stick it in the eye of the Russians. I'm a diplomat. I want to try to do diplomacy. But there's nothing better for a diplomat like me, sitting across the table from yeah. Russians or the Chinese or whomever. There's nothing better than to have a president of the United States, a national security advisor, a secretary of defense, who is pushing a credible threat of military action. Right. So that way your diplomacy has a muscle. A credible threat. If, if, it, if, if it was two years ago and we were somehow in this exact situation, what would happen? What would the United States be doing right now? 
Well, first of all, we wouldn't be in this situation because Donald Trump would have never given the pipeline, the pipeline. Yeah. to the Russians. And, and that's a key moment, because you've got to think about this, is that the, the Russians have wanted that pipeline uh, for a very long time. They started building it, uh, planning it and building it under Obama, and nothing was done. And when Donald Trump came in, all we ever heard from the Russians is, well, it's almost done, it's almost done. And for four years, the Trump administration worked diligently through sanctions and other means to make sure that it wasn't finished. They did not turn it on. And we are still not there. It's not quite finished. So yeah. the idea that the Biden team throws its hands up and says, OK, we're going to let this pipeline go forward, uh, it was a gift to Merkel. It was part of Biden's idea that he wants the applause from the Europeans. I think it's a dangerous idea to want consensus with people who don't share the same threat assessment as we do. It's it's so hysterical that we had to listen to all of this madness about Russian collusion and, you know, he, he was he was Putin's right. puppy and everything else like that. I mean, it just it's all so stupid now when you look back at it in hindsight. Um, Wendy Sherman, I guess, is the name of the woman that's uh, handling the talks on our side. How's she doing? I mean, I've watched Wendy Sherman fail for the United States for decades, whether it's North Korea or Iran and now Russia. I mean, yeah. come on. The idea that we're putting Wendy Sherman as the negotiator for the United States is embarrassing. This means that uh, you know people like Jake Sullivan, he cannot, I can't imagine a world where Jake Sullivan thinks, hey, my best negotiator is Wendy Sherman. She's got a long history of being duped by, the, by everybody. I mean, every time she cuts a deal, it, it turns out to be a disastrous deal, and she got duped, and she believed the other side. She's so gullible. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. One of the weakest diplomats we have. It is amazing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that we haven't fallen further with the people that we let run this country. It's so embarrassing. Rick Renault, good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rob.